So this video is going to look at the two-dimensional Fourier transform and some of the filtering that you can do with it. And here I've got a photograph uh, that I took on my recent holiday. And the first thing we're going to do is to look at the Fourier transform. So let's run this script that I've written. And if you want the MATLAB for the script, it's available from the website, uh, which is in the link below. Uh, so here we have in this uh, middle top picture is the absolute value of the filtered Fourier transform of the image. And I'm just going to rotate that a little. So it's, uh, it's the Fourier transform that has been filtered with our first filter. And below it, I'm showing the filter. So this is in the Fourier transform domain. Uh, the image is 600 by 600, and the filter is also 600 by 600 in the Fourier transform domain. And in this case, this filter we're showing is multiplying almost everything by one. So we're not, uh, we're not filtering out very much. Uh, the, what we are filtering out is shown in the top right-hand picture. So in this picture here, uh, it shows the amount that we have removed from the Fourier transform uh, having done the filter. Okay, so let's just uh, reiterate that. Here's the image. We take the two-dimensional Fourier transform of it and we multiply that by the filter in the Fourier domain. And what we're left with is shown here in the middle at the top. And what was removed is shown at the middle at the top right. And in this case, we're not removing very much, only the area out and the very edge of the uh, of the Fourier transform, the two-dimensional Fourier transform. And down here in the bottom left is the uh, absolute value of the filter in the image domain. So what this means is, well, this is the filter in the Fourier domain. So if we take the inverse Fourier transform of the uh, figure here in the bottom middle, then it gives us a time domain or, or an image domain uh, filter, two-dimensional filter, uh, which could be applied or would be applied uh, by convolution to the image if we were to do it in the image domain. But instead, we're taking the Fourier transform and we're doing the filtering in the Fourier transform domain. And for this uh, filter here, uh, notice that uh, we're keeping almost everything. It's flat. And what that means is in the image domain, it's a delta function. So the filter is a delta function. And what this means is that each or what this shows is this shows how much spreading has happened to each pixel in the image and we're going to look at that as we go through and look at different filters okay so this is a filter which kept almost everything uh, let's look at a filter which keeps less so here we have a filter where we're only keeping the portion in the middle of the two-dimensional Fourier transform uh, and so in this case we're keeping the middle 200 by 200 so instead of uh, storing, this is a, a compression that we could do, uh, instead of having to store 600 by 600 pixels, uh, we can now, uh, if we apply this filter, we can store only these pixels here in the middle, which is 200 by 200 in this case. And it shows in the top left the filtered image. Well, we can see that it looks very much like the original image, um, but we can see some vertical lines around the flagpole and there is some distortion. Uh, so it's not a, around the edge of the building, you can see that as well. So the advantage of doing, if we do this filtering here, is we can throw away all of this, uh, these pixels here in the top right hand corner, which is lots of pixels we've been able to throw away. And we could only need to store the 200 by 200 uh, in the center of our Fourier transform. And these are the ones here that we would be keeping uh, in this, uh, if this were the case. Okay, so this is one form of uh, filtering which gives us uh, some compression. And the bottom left here shows how each of the pixels is being spread out uh, in this new image, uh, which is the compressed image. And, and as you would expect, so let's just talk about this relationship. Uh, in the Fourier, uh, the um, filter is a square in this direction. So it's a, a, a straight a zero and then up to one and then back to zero. So that's a square. And we know that the Fourier transform and the inverse Fourier transform of a square is a sinc function. 
and in the other dimension, if we switch it around, it's also a square. And so what we're seeing in the, in the image domain is a sync function in, the, uh, in each of the axes of the image. So each pixel is being spread out by a sync function in the x direction and a sync function in the y direction. And this picture here explains all these vertical lines in our image here. So hopefully you can see them with the resolution of this video, but there are vertical line uh, um, uh, disc uh, errors in the compressed uh, and horizontal errors as well in the compressed image um, because we have thrown away quite a lot of data. So this is a compressed image which has got loss. Uh, and you can see those, those vertical line shadows are coming from the fact that you've got a sync function spreading out each pixel. And that was because the filter was a square low pass filter. Uh, and don't forget all of the uh, values close to the center of this square in the Fourier transform domain are the low frequency values. And so we are removing, in this case, removing the high frequency values. So this is a low pass filter. So what if we did even more removal? Uh, here's an example here where we're keeping only 100 by 100. Uh, we're throwing away even more. This has got more compression, which is good from a compression, data compression point of view. Uh, but you can see more of these uh, lines and, and more distortion in the image. And you can see the sync function is spread out because the filter has kept less, uh, the, it's a narrower square, so it spreads out in the image domain. So all of these uh, are exactly analogous to what happens with one-dimensional Fourier transforms. And I think this is really a graphical way of, of understanding Fourier transforms, and it helps, helps me to understand one-dimensional Fourier transforms as well as two-dimensional. Uh, well, what if we made even more? So if we got it down so that there was only, we were only keeping 20 by 20, uh, then uh, we're throwing away most of the image in the frequency domain, uh, in, the, in the Fourier transform domain, and of course we've got a very much distorted image, and down here on the left shows, well, each pixel is being spread out a lot. Uh, if we've done this. Uh, just one thing to note as well, in the bottom left, I'm not showing the entire 600 by 600. Uh, I'm zooming in to show the, uh, so that we can see that spreading function over the, uh, the region 30 either side of the center. Okay, so this is low pass filtering done in this way. Uh, what about high pass filtering? Well, here's an example of high pass filtering. And I think this really highlights the, the fact that the high frequencies are on the outside in our two-dimensional Fourier transform. So here the filter shows that we're keeping now, we're keeping everything outside that square and we're throwing away whatever is inside that square. So this is a high pass filter, it's passing everything that is a, a large value and throwing away the small. So this is throwing away these values over here and it's keeping uh, this from our image. And interestingly enough, even though they were only small values that are now being kept in terms of the heights of these are small, uh, it's actually the cru crucial important information of the straight lines. And so you can see here high frequencies in images corresponds to sharp lines. So the, the sharpness of your image is in the high frequency in the Fourier domain, which means uh, the areas of the, freak of the Fourier transform out near the edges. And that's what's being kept when you're keeping the high frequencies. So that's an important thing and an interesting thing to visualize. That's where that information is being stored in the frequency domain or the edges. Yep. Okay, so another one here we're going to do is a different type of filter where instead of doing high pass or low pass, in this case, we're going to do a threshold. So here I've chosen a threshold and basically any of the values in the Fourier transform which are below a certain level are going to be set to zero. So it's not just the inner, inner square or the outside that square in terms of low pass or high pass. Now it's, I'm applying a threshold. It's a different way of doing compression. So in this case, now all of the areas you can see that we're setting to zero in our filter. And so all of those values that correspond to those, pixels, those locations in the Fourier transform can be discarded. And that's in the top right hand side. So we're discarding a lot, which is good because we can do a lot of compression. We only need to store the ones that we have not discarded. Uh, and then our image in this case looks quite good. It doesn't have any of those uh, vertical line shadows. 
but it does look a bit grainy. You can see that. Uh, so let's uh, look if we th set the threshold higher. If we set, then we're throwing more away, we're keeping less, and our image has more deterioration. And if we make the threshold even higher again, then we're going to keep even less. Uh, and again, this is a different, uh, different to our low pass filter. Um, and this might be uh, something that you could store with very, very low um, data storage. And it might be that the image is still sufficient for your needs. Of course, it might not be. And this is a, a, a threshold that you can choose as a designer. OK, so what about uh, another uh, important fact? The last bit I want to point out uh, is around the amplitude and the phase. So, so far, I've only shown the amplitude in these plots here in the Fourier domain. So what if I didn't worry about the phase at all? What if I discarded the phase and just set the phase to equal zero? So here what I've done is I've taken the Fourier transform and I've, I've made a filter which passes everything through. So we're not doing any filtering in terms of, uh, of, of um, uh, setting certain values to zero anymore. And what we're doing here though, I've discarded the phase. So all I've done is to keep the amplitude. And then I've just done the inverse Fourier transform and this is what the image look, looks like. So if you only kept the amplitude of your Fourier transform, then the, re, re, the image that you would recover doesn't look very much like the original image. Uh, and I think this is an important, very important thing for image processing, is that we often look at just the amplitude of the Fourier transform, but in many ways the phase is far more important. So now what I'm going to do is Instead of keeping the amplitude and discarding the phase, now I'm going to keep the phase and discard the amplitude. And let's see what we get. Well, in this case, uh, the amplitude has been set to zero, as we can see. We've kept the phase, but the image that I get is black. Uh, it looks like there's nothing there. But actually, interestingly, this is just a, some, it's a trick. It's something that uh, often confuses people. Uh, but what I'm plotting here actually is three colors, red, green, and blue. And when I plot all the three phases together, they all add up uh, to give you black. But what I'm going to do now is just plot the blue. So now I've, what I've done is I've extracted out the phase from the blue color and uh, I've again discarded the amplitude on the Fourier transform. I've just kept the phase. And if I do the inverse Fourier transform, you can see here that the phase alone, all I've done is use the phase, and the phase alone almost gives us back the image. Uh, in, in fact, it gives us a lot of the information about the image. So I could do the same for the red color and the green color, and you would see that, that the, it fills in lots of these lines here. Uh, and so the point I'm really trying to make here is that the phase is absolutely critical and a large amount of the information of an image is stored in the phase. So hopefully this video of two-dimensional Fourier transforms using images has given you more insights into the Fourier transform. Uh, if you like the video, uh, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos. And as I said at the start, if you'd like the MATLAB code, that implements everything I've done on this video, go to the website in the link below and you'll find the summary sheet which contains the full uh, MATLAB code.